Hey, it's Captain Matt, voter secret weapon, and I've got a question for you. Did you know this about the voting industry? Going to go through a bunch of different things that um, I think are interesting and see if you knew this about the voting industry. The first is how the size of the voting industry compares to the cars and trucks. A lot of people think, oh, it's just like buying a car or a truck or owning it's just like a car or a truck or working with the dealership is just like a car or a truck. The manufacturers are just like car manufacturers. The reality is the boating industry is minuscule compared to cars and trucks. If you look, 2021 sales numbers, 420,000 boats were sold in 2021, a record year. 15.5 million cars and trucks sold versus 420,000 new boats sold. On the U side, it's very similar. 1.1 million boats sold on the U side, almost 41 million light cars and trucks sold on the U side. Again, less than 3% of the total amount. But when you look at the number of manufacturers, there are well over a hundred manufacturers. It may give close to 200. I kind of stopped counting after I got to that many compared to about 30 light cars and truck manufacturer. 77% of the manufacturers are boat manufacturers versus 3% of the units sold. Different world. It, you break that down even more. If you look at it, the number of manufacturers compared to the number of units sold by the type of boat, Pontoons, less than 60,000 sold, 37 manufacturers. Center console, same type of numbers, 58 manufacturers that I could find. There's probably more out there. The only one that was similar is a much smaller scale, but personal watercraft, only three manufacturers with about 73,000 units sold. Now, these are 2020 numbers. I couldn't find the breakdown on the 2021, but they were very similar. There was only about uh, 10,000 difference in the units sold. If you compare that to the auto industry, the segmentation is significant, and then you add the dealers on top of it. So I also thought this was an interesting number. Did you know how many boats there are in the U.S.? Well, in 2005, 13 million boats registered in the U.S. Florida was the biggest state, 11.84 million vessels registered. Of those, 11 million were propelled by mechanical means. So not a sailboat, not a paddleboard, not a kayak. Um, and that was in 2020. So we dropped about a million boats from the peak of 2005 to 15, 16 years later, 2020. If you look at it broken down by size, you can see most of the boats that are mechanically propelled. So power boats, we'll call them. About 4 million are under 16 feet. About six and a half million are 16 to 26 feet, and only half a million are 26 to 40, and then just a few, 40 to 65 is 70,000, over 65 feet, only 11,000. Again, these are registered boats. So most of the registered boats, six and a half million, about half of them are over half of them are 16 to 26 feet. Just thought that was kind of interesting. If you want to look at where your state ranks, here's a, a listing of in 2020 registrations by state, Florida, Minnesota, Michigan, California, Wisconsin, Ohio, South Carolina, Texas, New York, North Carolina, and so on down the line. You can pause it and take a look at that. Another thing, did you know that in the marine industry, boats are very, very much handmade, very labor intensive. You don't have the robotics like you do in a lot of other manufacturing because everything is so segmented. And even the largest manufacturer of may only make a thousand of a certain model. That's a lot in the boating world. If you make a thousand of that model, you are one of the biggest manufacturers going Brunswick, um, you know, uh, Malibu's company, uh, Mastercraft. You're making a huge number if you're making a thousand of one model. There's many manufacturers that don't even make a thousand. And it doesn't matter if it's a pontoon or if it's a fiberglass boat. It's very manual process. You can see you're running the holes down on a dolly, uh, the deck, you're running on a, a overhead a pulley system. And it's very, very manual, very few robotics. If you look at this factory, this is just the way it is compared to other factories that are very, very automated. What does that mean? Higher labor costs means higher prices for boats. More manual labor means more chances for little dumb mistakes to happen that then show up later down the line. We'll talk about that more. You also, did you know that most boats 
are not water tested. They may put them in a, a dunk tank like this to actually float them so they can run some of the systems, the generator, the pumps. Um, they may spray it down with water on a cabin boat to make sure everything is sealed up properly. They may not even fire up that engine. And they most of the time, most boats are not even run on the lake before they get to the dealer. Now, that's why I say dealer is so important because it's the dealer's responsibility. Then before it gets to you, the end consumer, the dealer's responsibility is to finish rigging that boat. We'll talk about it here in just a second and make sure that when it gets to you, it's in great shape. This is how boats are transported. Did you know there's not an easy way to unload a load of boats. You've got to have a crane. You've got to have a lift. You've got to have a forklift, something to get those boats off. They're big, heavy, awkward to lift. You've got lifting eyes. You may do it by a forklift, a number of ways, but it can cause damage. They're also just rolling down the interstate um, from wherever they're built to wherever your dealer is and they can be damaged in that process as well. If you've never seen a load of boats unloaded, I recommend don't go watch your boat get unloaded. You will be stressed out and freaking out the whole time. They may use a crane. There are some dealers that have to rent a crane to come and unload those lift. Others will have a lift like the one on the right where they can get it on the straps and they can hoist it up and get them off easier. Use that in a combination of forklifts uh, to get them set back down on trailers or to get them put on a rack in the showroom. It can be very precarious. <laughs> Usually the owner of the dealership, when a load of boats come in, will be out there with it just to supervise, to make sure that um, that everything with their million dollar plus of boats that are coming in or whatever it is, is well taken care of. Again, the dealership experience is different as well. When the boat, or, when the boat arrives at a, a boat dealership compared to when the car arrives at a car dealership, worlds of difference. A car, they peel off the protective covers that they put on them when they're running down the interstate, they back them down, and you can drive home with it the next day, right? Maybe even that day. Put some gas in it, clean it up, and you're ready to go. A boat is going to arrive with no bimini top on. Any of the accessories that don't travel well will need to be rigged up. Maybe the motor even needs to be rigged up with some dealers, depending on what their relationship is with the manufacturer. Some will say, manufacturer, you rig it. Some dealers will say, we don't know what motor they're going to want, so we'll rig it and we'll put the motor on that they request. There's steering. There's fluids that need to be added in most cases. There are some other accessories. And as I said, boats are very handmade. So sometimes, almost all the time, by the way, the dealer is going to need to fix something that wasn't done right at the factory. And the good dealers will put that boat on the water and run it for 15, 20 minutes and kind of shake it down, see what needs to be done before you, the customer, takes delivery of that boat. Right now in this environment, some dealers don't have time to do it. And so as the consumer, you're finding all of those little issues when the reality, the dealership has a, a, a pre-delivery checklist. And that checklist, they should go through and add the fluids that need to be added, tighten up things, add the bimini top, go through every system, turn on the stereo, turn on the pumps, turn the switches on, turn the lights on, and check all of that stuff and then go run that boat to make sure it's propped properly and it's running in the proper RPM range. And that sheet gets turned in to then start the warranty. That pre-delivery inspection checklist needs to be turned in to start the warranty on the boat and the motor and kick all of that stuff off. It's easy to check boxes, takes a little more time and effort to actually do the inspection thoroughly and make sure that everything's right. It's a difference that you may not know about. Another thing, did you know that when it comes to the warranty, a five-year warranty is not equivalent across manufacturers and across dealers even the way they handle it. You also have multiple different warranties. You got a warranty on the motor, you've got a warranty on the boat, and you got a warranty on the trailer if you have a trailer. Now, the manufacturer also has warranties on each component that comes from the component manufacturers. Some manufacturers will say, we are going to take care of everything. If we decided to put it on our boat, we're going to warranty it for the number of years. Some manufacturers say, well, we didn't build the stereo remote. We didn't build that pump. We didn't, we didn't create the flooring. And they're going to send you to the other manufacturer of that component. And this is where your dealer comes in to be very, very important. Some dealers, great at working that system of warranty, going to the right people with the right message, with the right details to get a warranty claim issued. Some dealers, not so good and have a harder time getting warranty claims um, taken care of 
for their consumers. That's why the dealer is so important. Did you know that most manufacturers say you can't produce, publish the price in any of your marketing material? Don't put it online in your listings. Don't put it on your website. Don't advertise it in the magazines or the newspaper. Don't publish price. It's a weird thing in the boating industry that the manufacturers tend to be scared of price, but then there's also the flip side of they don't want price to be the thing that is what is marketed. It's the easiest thing to market as a dealership is low price to bring people in. And then you have a dealer in Texas advertising a super low price that a dealer in California um, can't match or, or the boats equipped differently, um, or there's emission differences and there's cost differences of transport at times. So manufacturers just say, no price unless we say you can publish price on that boat. And those are typically going to be the entry level boats, the nationally advertised or market advertised price where the manufacturer sets them. If you found this valuable, found this interesting, give it a thumbs up. If you're looking to buy a boat, grab that boat buyers toolkit, boat buyers toolkit.com. If you're a new boat owner, go check out the boater boot camp. They're both totally free. Best boat captain on the water. If you struggle. Get a little stressed around the docks and handling your boat. That will solve the problem. Money back guarantee on everything. And uh, remember, life truly is better on a boat.